Hello, buddy. My name is Eric, and today we got something really, really interesting. This is a new malware that's going around, and it's doing something that is very uncommon in the malware world. It's actually escalating to kernel mode. So we're going to look at this, and then I'm going to show you, because a few people have talked about this, but I actually tracked down the sample, and we're going to take a look at it. A new malicious package called Steelfox mines for cryptocurrency and steals credit card data by using the bring your own vulnerable driver technique to gain system privilege. That's not accurate. It's, it's to gain kernel privileges, which is substantially higher than system privileges on Windows computers. So, if you know what a kernel driver is, it's the highest level of privilege that is often used by anti-cheats, and people get kind of upset when anti-cheats do it. But what they don't, I think a lot of people don't understand, is there's really not much risk in installing a kernel level anti-cheat or a kernel driver in general because if a kernel driver is signed by microsoft escalating from admin to kernel is very easy so what these people have done is the same technique that a lot of cheaters will use to bypass kernel level anti-cheats which is you can get around windows's strict rules on who can have a kernel driver by exploiting an existing one that has a vulnerability given kernel drivers are usually written in unsafe languages like c there's quite a lot of vulnerabilities available state-sponsored threat actors and ransomware groups uh, and uh, random posters on unknowncheats.me however this technique is extending to info stealers I'm kind of curious why they would do this, because info stealing, as I have shown before, is not something that requires a lot of privileges, but maybe there's some additional potency here. So Kaspersky discovered Steel Fox in August, but they say the malware has been around since February of last year and has increased distribution lately. And the big thing they've been doing now, and that's what we've got a sample of, is the fake JetBrains. So if you know JetBrains, it's a development IDE, and it costs money, so these guys are distributing a bogus cracked version. And while I was tracking down this sample, I actually found a different bogus crack, so I strongly recommend you don't go looking for cracked versions of JetBrains. Spursky has also reported that the posts come with complete instructions on how to illegally activate the software. The one I found was on GitHub. Given YouTube is really sensitive about cracks, I'm not actually going to show the site I got it from, uh, but it looks pretty much like this one. So it does actually work, apparently. But you also get a bonus, and of course, because you're cracking, like a crack will usually need administrator access, and that's what is needed. Because in order to exploit the existence of a vulnerable driver, you do need a local admin, which is easy enough to ex exploit anyways. And as they say, it looks legitimate until the malware is unpacked. Now here I've got the malicious file, and I ran it and detected easy. Now, we don't see any obvious red flags, even with the heuristic scan, it's not being detected as packed, which is interesting. And when we run the file, as far as I know, it's not going to immediately detonate, so we'll, we'll run it and we'll see what we got here. And I got all the analysis tools that you've come to expect. We got MITM proxy going, and if we see anything interesting on there, I'll have to switch the capture so that you can see it, because that's not going to show in the looking glass. But we'll see if that catches anything. So let's try out the payload now. Okay, so first step, you install, uh, and thus far nothing particularly interesting has happened. Now I assume we can just browse anywhere we want, because uh, this, it, but it is going to actually patch, so we'll just choose an exe. Uh, okay, and we'll click activate, and then we have to give it admin permissions. Okay, so it's still the same, that's one. I just gave it admin permissions. Okay. No indication so far that it actually did modify the binary that we asked it to, but that's okay. We weren't really... That's not what we were wanting out of this. And we see the second uh, process. And of course, because this is elevated, we got to elevate our procx to see what's going on here. After we click that um, to activate it, it immediately starts to modify the f and open the file. And then it goes to install a bunch of JetBrain native files, and it also goes to check the Adobe Genuine Service service. I assume to get rid of it. I, I can't imagine why that would be necessary on a, a supposed crack of JetBrain software. And here we get a gel file that I assume is doing the actual uh, piracy. But that's not what we're interested in. Now we can see quite a bit of stuff going on in here. 
I'm assuming this is going to be anti-analysis, which of course, given this is a very stealthy VM, uh, we're going to pass a little bit, but so far it hasn't. Nothing so far. Now you can also check the services to see if we've uh, discovered any uh, unwanted kernel drivers. Now the driver this uses is winring 0.sys, which is a well-known vulnerable driver that has heavily been exploited in the wild for years. I didn't even... Okay, I didn't even know... I almost... I, I was just assuming that was a legit... No. That's not actually Adobe Genuine Service. That's a part of the payload. So let's just see what this is doing. Let's see where... Oh, and... Uh... I think I'm potentially starting to see some activity, but not clear on what's going on on the network yet. And that's getting a ton of flags. This appears to be the mining part of the payload. Now if we go back to Process Explorer, see, okay, you're going to be running on a service host if you're running at all. Okay, but so far we don't see the because it, it seems like it, it installs it without actually running it. So it's probably going to launch on the next reboot. Now this is getting a high entropy packer detected. See, So we're not really going to find anything in strings. Yep, just endless uh, nonsense. And a few imports. Okay, it's got virtual protect. Probably not going to be the most difficult thing in the world to unpack. But I'll just uh, initialize it with services first, and then we can think about trying to dump it. Okay, and now the Adobe Genuine service has just started. We can look at this, and we can see, okay, uh, so far we got these. Well, let's refresh this and see if anything has popped up. Nothing so far. Just the drivers that we should have. But this service is now running a system, so it's now gained a system, and then through uh, WinRing, it is apparently going to gain uh, kernel access as well. And this part of the payload has never been uploaded to VirusTotal before. Of course, it opens NTDLL, but that's, I mean, pretty much every Windows program does. Now, the next step I always find is to reboot after we have installed something and see what happens when we boot up. And the service is already running again, so it did not, it, it does run on boot, but the initial dropper does not. So the continued activity comes entirely from the fake Adobe Genuine service. I'm gonna attempt to attach a debugger to it to see if we can find anything interesting in its memory. Okay, so I just thought we'd uh, take a brief uh, moment to look at something truly strange. So I had this running in the debugger, and I tried to restart it. And note, we don't have permission to access the file anymore. That's weird. And it doesn't matter if we do it through Task Manager services as well. So why can't we do it? Well, I found this out when I was working to copy it to a different folder, which I did successfully do. But after the service payload completes, it's actually got some kind of rootkit-like behavior where it uses the application information service to protect itself and block any access. Now, this only this doesn't persist reboot, so if we reboot, we will be able to access it again. And for whatever reason, the initialization for this actually takes a really long time. Now, I had previously I'd run x64 debug using the system user with PS exec, but that actually didn't make any difference, so I'm not going to bother doing that again. And what we can do while the service is running is we can hook it. Now, I've done a bit of reverse engineering. There's going to be more to do. I just wanted to show this bit on how this uh, program actually works. And a lot of it comes to launching that service to protect itself. So now we can we have to elevate this, and then we can attach without issue to the Adobe Genuine service. And we're now, uh, we're now in... I also made uh, another minor tweak. I used a utility to remove ASLR, meaning that the address layout is now consistent rather than being randomized every time we start it. So if you want to, so that uh, when I'm working on static analysis, I can just use the same address space without any trouble. My very rich friends says, it's better to be lucky than to be smart. 
And sometimes with reverse engineering, that is good advice. Because what we got here, uh, I set a hardware breakpoint on a read from the packed portion of the binary uh, while I was going through in Binary Ninja and sort of slowly working on re-implementing uh, the packer statically. I left this in, and after many reboots and trying to hook this at System Stone up, it appears I have successfully hooked the unpack function, which doesn't execute immediately. It executes after a bunch of stuff, so there's no real chance of getting it to run in an emulator. So, uh, this is an incredibly lucky opportunity. So let's step through here. I'm actually, I'm not going to use this, but just in case, it's kind of like a save state, so we at least have something uh, to show. I am going to dump this. Not, this is not a good spot to dump, but this is just uh, basically a save state for me. As if we can do this right, I'm going to try and step to the return and then see where we are in that function. I should be able to do this uh, without having to uh, emulate everything. Now, I don't know if this is obfuscation or just the way it happened, but it seems like we're using SIMD instructions in an unpacker. Maybe that is just normal optimization, but it's not its not something I have honestly seen a lot. Okay, so RCX. Okay, let's just see what's being dumped. We'll follow this and dump too. So this is the first byte. Just saving this in a notepad, just in case. Through what looks like a full loop. And uh, we'll let this... Let me simply jump over here. I have a feeling I know where we're going to return to, but let's see. If I'm right. And then this is the number of bytes we have left uh, to do. I'm going to check if this is my labeled unpacker in my binary ninja. You won't be able to see it because of how the capture works, but okay, it's this little sub-function. And then this is uh, one of the other ways of implementing a loop. And now uh, we're going to call this RDX plus 20. And then we lost. Okay, so we'll try that. That means our approach is correct in terms of hooking. Okay, so after a, a couple more tries following around, I got it. I dumped it. I have the payload. The one more thing I had to do, and this probably just because I messed up the dumping, I had to add uh, the magic number stuff. I just copied a P header from a different file, and we are in business. So here we have the entry to WinRing 0x64, which we knew was involved. I'm going to agree with the person in the bleeping computer article who said the person who made this is passionate and knowledgeable about C++. Look, if, you, if you're the person who made this, feel free to uh, comment or tell me. I get the vibe this is very much a passion project just from the amount of overkill here. There is no reason for this kind of a project to need a kernel level rootkit, but they have achieved it. So, okay. So we got winring 0 x64.sys and as always, the decrypted and dumped part of this in addition to the sample will be available in my school. So if anyone does uh, not want to spend uh, a couple of hours dumping that out, uh, that's an option as well. So here we go. So here, and then I believe these are going to actually contain uh, the vulnerable driver. I uploaded this out of virus total, mainly out of curiosity to see, am I the first one to get this? And it appears I am the first one, or, or uh, the hash is slightly different in my file. And we do get some hits for vulnerable driver. So WinRing0 is actually embedded in here. Now that is a vulnerable driver. It's not malware in of itself, but it's valuable because it is a signed kernel driver you can load on Windows by default. And this is probably... I have a feeling this is going to tie into uh, actually loading the kernel driver. Oh, we can look at that in a second. Uh, we create the kernel driver... This drops the file, and then if we, if the result of that is successful, we will then want to actually uh, load the vulnerable kernel driver that is WinRing, okay, is WinRing 0, so this drops the vulnerable driver, and then we exploit the driver using this IOCTL to take advantage. Now, lucky for us, while this malware is, of course, closed source, I, I might take a bit more of a look into this, but 
we pretty much we got a pretty good gist of what's going on the only thing i didn't see was any sort of info stealer activity i'm guessing that's just because the c2 was dead and i was more interested in finding the cool uh stuff with the kernel driver but what we can do is read a bit more about the vulnerability in this driver. Now, what's interesting is this driver, and like the name suggests, and this is why some people speculated it's not really a vulnerability, WinRing Zero is a driver that is designed to allow you from user mode to do things you would otherwise need Ring Zero for. It was made so that open source and independent developers who wanted to make overclocking utilities or other things that required it would be able to do so without their own extended validation certificate for signing. I, I think, to my understanding, it was actually a friend of the developers who had a software company who ended up signing this kernel driver. They had no malicious intent, but it's an insecure design. And even big companies like EVGA Precision X was using this insecure kernel driver. But it doesn't really matter if it's installed or not, as long as you don't have anything to prevent it it's a threat. Some antiviruses do block it, and interestingly, the best way to protect against vulnerable kernel drivers, whether you like it or not, is actually installing Riot Vanguard. If you have Riot Vanguard installed, and the reason I know this is because I had WinRing Zero installed from some weird overclocking utility I downloaded, uh, it will just block it. It'll just say, we will not allow this to load. Uh, the way Vanguard works, it loads before everything else, and it has a list of dangerous kernel drivers and just won't let them load. So if you play League of Legends or Valorant, you don't have to worry. Theoretically, of course, the Vanguard driver could be exploited, but the problem is the way that the main security against these exploits on Windows is the signing. So if a signed kernel driver is exploited, game over. The one thing you can do as well is you can go to device security. We'll go to Windows security and I'll show you. And you can go to device security. And this is under core isolation, despite not being a virtualization-based security feature. You want to turn on Microsoft Vulnerable Driver Block List. And that will block a lot of vulnerable kernel, known vulnerable kernel drivers. Of course, a truly sophisticated adversary could just reverse engineer drivers until they found one that wasn't well known. So the way this works, and the worst decision here, is you don't even need to be admin to right to this memory, although you do need to be admin to install the kernel driver, is you can map this, and it basically gives you unfettered access to the entire system memory from the kernel, so you have full privileges. And this is actually a fork that doesn't have uh, the vulnerability, but it, uh, it's unsigned, so that doesn't really work. So I would suggest if you use software overclocking from a reputable company, uh, it shouldn't be using this driver. So that is going to be all for this video. So this payload does a couple of things in, in summary. It seems, or originally it had an info stealer, the command and control for that died. It has a crypto mining functionality, and it's pretty sophisticated as a rootkit. It uses both app info and a kernel driver to hide itself and block you from accessing the executable. When that is engaged, like I showed earlier in the video, it's like trying to debug a game from user mode that uses kernel-level anti-cheat. It just doesn't let you run the file, do anything to it. You just can't. Access denied. Because of being blocked from the kernel. So that is going to be all. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe. And let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Bye.